Hey everybody, as you are keenly aware, I am your chapter's official photographer. I hope in the last nine months you've come to realize I'm pretty good at what I do, and I thank all of you for your trust and your referrals. Today I'm going to turn the table slightly, as I'm known to do, and instead of telling you that I shoot business headshots or family portraits, I do drone photography or I do cool videos and pretty pet photos and darling kid pictures, I'm going to share some hints and lessons on how you can improve your own photography and video skills just a little bit. You see, I've been shooting professionally since November of 1990, and if you do the math real quick there, Victor, you'll realize I just celebrated 30 incredible years of photography. Most of the time, people share their knowledge with me, and today I'm going to do that very same thing today here with all of you. Why, you ask? Reason number one, let's start really close to home. Some of you guys have been using your phones for six-minute commercials to show off your talents and your work sites and work accomplishments and even your team members. And while good video captures and keeps the viewer's attention, a bad video will do just the opposite. The second reason why preparing for and executing a great video is we really importante because we've learned content is king and especially video. I say it every few weeks in my 30 second commercials and you can ask Barbara Gobi and Bonnie Unsworth, a good video is everything. It gets people's attention. The third reason I'm sharing this information is in my own photography world, these very tools that I'm sharing this morning are coming back into play. In the last 45 days, I've built about $3,000 just using my mobile devices, which means I'm back to basics and so I'm gonna go over them with you. They may seem a little basic, but guess what? The first one, wipe the lens clean. Seriously, uh, use a soft cloth, your shirt tail, a sock, it doesn't matter, just give it a quick wipe. Nothing worse than a video that looks like it was taken during an earthquake. So I'm gonna ask you to learn how to steady your hand or else buy a gimbal. What's a gimbal? That's a gimbal. Simply put, it's like a gyroscope that keeps your phone camera stable as you move. A gimbal lets you walk down the hallway nice and smoothly. It's really pretty cool. If you're a profession that ever uses a video camera to interact with a client or teammate, spend the $150 and step up your game. Are you a blogger or a vlogger? You should already have one. If you choose not to learn to hold the camera steady, breathe evenly and walk slowly. Doing a pan, a sweep, or a tilt, find a tree or wall to lean against and then slow down your movement. Next up is focus. Cameras have autofocus, but I say don't trust it. Tell the camera what you want the focus to be on. Most phones simply tap the screen on the spot that you want to be the sharpest and the center of attention. You'll notice the focus will change a little bit. On the earlier phone cameras, the same action would change the exposure too. This may not be what you want, especially if you're shooting, say, a sunset and you touch the person's face and the focus detects that they're dark and lightens the entire image so your beautiful sunset colors turn to white. Newer cameras may have a separate exposure control where you can darken the image to correct the washed out colors. More than likely, it will be best to move it a bit closer to your subject, turn on the flash and set the exposure to the background colors and take your image, just like this. The fourth component of a successful photo or video, and then let's be clear here, all of these will help your regular everyday photo taking, whether it's your puppy, the kids, or that beautiful flower that finally bloomed overnight. These are useful whether you're making money or not. So back to the next aspect, framing. And I'm not talking about framing a photo and putting it up on the wall. I'm speaking of how you frame the image within the confines of your camera's viewer or screen. The biggest mistake I see is when folks take a group photo and all the heads are lined up across the center of the image with two feet of nothing above their heads. Tilt the camera down, frame the people with just a little space all around the top and sides. Crop the subject because that's what we're there to see, not the ceiling. And speaking of cropping, stop zooming in with your camera's digital zoom. Move closer to the subject and crop the subject afterwards in your editing program. You want to start off with as many clear, clean pixels as you can, so don't crop in the camera. Lighting. When doing boudoir photography, don't ask me, I don't need the end of the letter. I learned a simple rule. If you don't want to see it, don't light it. However, conversely, if you want to see, light it properly. If you're sending a video to a client and they can't make out the details because you didn't think to aim a light in that direction or open a window shade, think about it. Perspective. You've heard change your altitude and change your attitude. Same with photos. Get on the floor when you take the next baby photo. Get up on a ladder, look down at your subject. Separate your images or video from someone else's by giving us a different view. All right, we're getting near the end. You've got the pictures, you got the video, let's put them all together, let's put them in a box, put a bow on it. What am I saying? That's right, let's make an actual video. It's very simple. This program is iMovie. I'm going to show you how fast you can do it. This whole thing took about a minute and 20 seconds. I'm going to speed it up just a little bit. So let me tell you what I've done. 
I put four photographs in, drug them into the program. I turn around, I slid a couple of little sliders, fade in, fade out, pick the theme, pick some music. It automatically starts playing. It's a really cool, easy program anybody can do it. But what the nice thing about it is, it steps up your game. It steps it up in front of your clients or your friends and even your family. It lets people know that you're putting a little more effort in and you think they're worth a little bit more at the end of the day. Uh, hopefully this has been helpful. And at the end of this program, if you have any questions for me or thoughts or anything, let me know. Uh, thank you very much. I'm proud to be your BNI professional photographer. What are you still doing here? You're supposed to leave. Go away.